called active transport. Right. Well, active transport is moving substances against a concentration gradient. Imagine this here being a gradient, okay? And imagine you're trying to push a trolley up a hill. Now, you've got to admit, if you were trying to push something up a hill, it will require energy. So, similarly, when substances are moved into a cell where there is already a higher concentration, then energy that we get from respiration will be required. Let's look at an example. Here's our root hair cell again. Now, inside the root hair cell, you already have a high concentration of what's called nitrate ions. Plants need nitrate ions for growth. Outside in the soil, there'll be some nitrate ions, but there'll be a lower concentration. So somehow, you've got to move the nitrate ions from outside inside. You can't do it by diffusion, because there's a lower concentration here than higher there. You can't do it by osmosis, because osmosis only involves, don't forget, water. So, what happens is we need to use energy. Energy will be used to effectively pull the nitrate ions against the concentration gradient from the surrounding soil into the cell. So it requires energy, and we use energy from respiration to do this. Okay? So diffusion is a passive process. Osmosis is a passive process. Neither of those require energy. Active transport requires energy, and we're moving stuff against a gradient. Now this also occurs in the human body. For example, in kidneys, as we'll come on in a later video, you recover sugar from the blood by transporting it against a concentration gradient. You don't want sugar being released into the urine. So all the sugar is being recovered by active transport against a concentration gradient back into the blood. Now what, what affects the movement of substances? 